if you were based in the Philippines, you would just need to have the SPAs notarized. But since you are based abroad, you will need to have it consularized. <laughs> Hey guys, Alex here. Welcome back to my channel, a channel about real estate, personal finance, and business. In today's vlog, I will be sharing with you how to buy a house in the Philippines if you are an OFW. But before anything else, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified if I have new videos like this one. If you are an OFW who is looking for a property to invest in here in the Philippines, but you don't know how to go about buying that property, then you need to watch this video. A lot of my clients are OFWs. That is short for Overseas Filipino Workers. So they often ask me, Alex, how can I buy a property in the Philippines when I am here in another country? Don't worry. Today, I will be breaking down for you the process of how to buy a house in the Philippines if you are an OFW. So the first step is to find a good real estate broker. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a real estate broker, but, but because it is really such a huge help for you as a buyer if you have a broker to assist you. For example, if you're looking for a house in CDO, then your broker can give you a list of the properties that fit your requirements, as well as photos and details of each property. Plus, what I do for my clients is that I usually give them the pros and cons of each property. Because the truth is, no property is perfect. And properties are not created equal. Each will have its own pros and cons. And so breaking it down into pros and cons will really help you decide which is best for you. A good broker can also help you identify whether a house is overpriced, at market value, or if it's a good deal. Your broker will also be the one to bring you or your representative to the properties that you would like to view, facilitate in the negotiation process if it's a privately owned property, or if it's still owned by a developer, then your broker will be the one to facilitate with the reservation process. Aside from this, your broker will also be the one to do due diligence and collect the requirements and documents needed once the deal is closed. A lot of people don't realize this, but being a broker is a lot of hard work because there are a lot of things that you need to consider in closing a deal and in helping the client acquire the right property for them. Next step, step number two, is to set a meeting with your preferred broker or agent for a property consultation. Usually, I prefer to set up a Zoom meeting with my client so that we can really communicate face-to-face -face because through Zoom, aside from being able to really talk with them face-to-face, -face, I can also share my screen with them. Actually, before the pandemic, I would communicate with my clients via Viber, WhatsApp, Messenger, sometimes email. But I found that this is not a really very efficient way of sharing information, especially for just chatting on these channels. Because it would take forever to share information this way. We would have tons of back and forth messages, which consumed a lot of time. Time, which was cut in half the moment I shifted to doing Zoom calls instead. Also, I found that having a face-to-face -face meeting helped me establish rapport with my clients faster because they could see my face and I could see theirs. So now during the Zoom meeting, I would ask my clients what their preferences were or what their preferences are in terms of size, like the floor and the lot area of the property that they're interested in, number of bedrooms, location, budget, and also financing. So once I have all these information, I would then select the properties that match their requirements. So once I have the properties in place, I would share photos and details of these listings through our Zoom meeting via screen share. And based on their top, top picks, I would then share video tours of their top properties. So this then brings us to the third step, the property tour. Even if you are an OFW and you're not here in the Philippines, you can still assign someone based here to check out your top picks for you. So usually, I have my clients shortlist three to four properties that they would like to view. So usually, it's either a friend or family member that they choose to view the property for them. So what I do is I then get the contact information of my client's representative. I give them a call and then I schedule a viewing with them. After viewing, I'll go back to my client to finalize on their property of choice. So 
after considering the information that I've given them along with the feedback from their representative. So that's when they will make the choice on which property they decide to go with, they, de they decide to buy. So once they have selected a property to purchase, we then proceed with the fourth step, which is closing and then documentation. So whether it is a property owned by a developer or a private individual, there are documents that need to be signed, namely the contract to sell, reservation agreements, and deed of sale. If you are buying a property through bank financing, you will also need to sign the bank's home loan documents. So since you're based abroad and can't sign for yourself, you will need to choose a representative, also known as your attorney in fact. So this person will then be the one to sign all the documents for you. It is very important that this person is someone you trust and someone who has the time to transact on your behalf. So once you have chosen your attorney, in fact, your broker will then email you the SPAs or the special power of attorneys needed. So an SPA is a legal form designating another person to be your attorney, in fact, or to be your representative in layman's terms to, again, sign all the documents on your behalf. So the developers and banks all have different SPAs. So for example, if you decided to go with a specific developer and you decided to get a loan with a specific bank, you will then have two SPAs, one from the developer and one from the bank. So as a, bro as a broker, so usually it's your broker who emails the SPA to you. So once received, you will just need to print one copy per SPA, sign on all the pages and on the last page, sign above your name, and then have it consularized at the nearest consul or embassy. If you were based in the Philippines, you would just need to have the SPAs notarized. But since you are based abroad, you will need to have it consularized. So once this is done, just mail the SPAs directly to your attorney, in fact, or to your representative. Take note that your special power of attorney or your SPA is the only document that needs to be originally signed and submitted by you as the buyer. As for the rest of the requirements, such as your income documents, your IDs, they can all be emailed to your broker and your broker can be the one to forward these documents to the bank or to the developer. Now let's go to payment. So your attorney, in fact, will need to open a checking account if they don't have one already for the payment because the banks and developers usually require a post-dated checks for equity payment or for the amortization payment. So once the checking account, once the checkbook is ready or has been received by your representative, then they will just need to follow the computation sheet provided by the developer or the term sheet provided by the bank. Write down all the information like the pay, the amounts, the dates needed, and then submit these to the bank or to the developer. And so that's it. Again, the four steps to buying a house in the Philippines, if you are an OFWR, number one, choose a good real estate broker. Two, set a property consultation with your broker so that you can discuss on the types of on the type of property that you need and your requirements. Next, once you've selected your top four properties, the broker shall then do a site visit with your representative on the four properties that you're interested in, maybe top three to four. And then number four, once you've chosen a property, you can then proceed to deal closing and then documentation. So I hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, please comment down in the comment section below what you learned. And if you have other questions that you would like to clarify on with regards to real estate, with regards to the process of buying a house in the Philippines, if you are an OFW, then just comment in the comment section below and you, I would be happy to address it in my next blog. So if you like this video, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified if I have new videos like this one. Till next time!